Hi everyone, welcome back to Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword 100% walkthrough with me, Austin John Plays of the YouTube channel Austin John Plays, which you're currently watching. Great. In our last episode, Link did the Skyview Temple. He met he met Garahim, the the super baddest guy of the game, and then we did some other stuff. In particular, we got ourselves up to four pieces of heart for an entire full heart, three goddess cubes, we opened up two of the chests, and we also got an additional heart for defeating Girahim the boss, which brought us up to eight hearts already, which is fantastic. And now, guess what we're gonna do? It's your number one most favoritest thing to do when you're excited for a Zelda game. That's right, we're gonna do a long series of side quests. By the time we're done with this video, we're gonna make our way to Elden Volcano. We're gonna have a total of six pieces of heart, nine goddess cubes, three chests open, and 25 crystals the crystals are a, a, a super cool thing that's gonna be from our uh, our homeboy uncle bats you're gonna find out who he is very shortly but the most important thing we have to do because we just finished the temple is we need to head over to the goddess statue with our new uh, piece of piece of tablet and yeah let's head on inside well great look at that we assembled a, I, I guess part of the motherboard and now it's gonna be like hey I know where you got to go now it's the red one which, spoilers, that's for fire. The amount of side quests that we have to do in this video, uh, have to do, is very small. The amount that we're gonna choose to do is extreme. Anyway, as soon as you walk out of the thing, uh, how do you say this name? Rhina? I'm gonna go with Rhina. Rhina needs you to find her daughter, and her daughter's gonna be lost somewhere. And you can actually just go around and listen to everybody and they're gonna give you hints as to where she is, but I know where she is, so you don't need to do any of that, which is super sweet. If you didn't know, you can actually explore Skyloft at night, but there's a whole bunch of enemies everywhere, so it's not, you know, the best thing to do. In fact, we are actually going to be heading into this house right here. There's, there's a reason we're going here. Uh, you can go into nighttime while in your bed or while in anyone else's bed. So, we're just gonna head over to this bed and we're gonna sleep until night. Also, a fun little feature of the game, all the houses in Skyloft, you don't know who they belong to until you've actually been in them once and then when you approach the door on the outside, you'll find out who they belong to. This guy right here is the one who sells you items during the day and at nighttime he buys uh, monster drops, but that's, that's just one of the many ways we're going to be able to get money in the game, but it's not the best and it's not what we're doing in this video. Soon as you leave the house, if you look to the left, you're going to see a little graveyard down here. This bottom left gravestone, hit it with your sword. You're going to see some horns and then you're going to move it. The shed is going to open up. We're going to head down there. Follow this linear path all the way down. I'm going to hear a loud eek sound. That's, that's from the little girl. Upon entering this house, there's a giant scary monster and there's skulls hanging everywhere and there's pictures of him on the walls. I'm, I too am very humble. Whoa, crazy looking bat guy. They actually updated his textures a lot. Whoa, he's doing big scary yell sounds. We better attack him with our weapons. And he's all like, stop, please, I beg of you, don't hurt me. Oh goodness, I know how this must look to you right now. We were playing the scream as loud as you can game. So he's actually not scaring this little girl whatsoever. TLDR, what's going on with this guy? He wants to be a human being and he wants to hang out with the residents, but he doesn't want, they're gonna be freaked out because he's a monster. So you have to gather gratitude crystals. Isn't that right, little girl? Yeah, that's right. The gratitude crystals are basically rewards for helping out people around Skyloft and the world. However, there are a bunch of them that we can just get randomly, just like chilling in Skyloft, so we're gonna do that right now. If you wanna have a little bit of fun and mystery to the game, as far as where to find these 10 gratitude crystals right now, I am going to be showing you an image on screen that's going to be from Zelda Dungeon, and they actually have an adorable little map that's going to show you the location of all of the crystals. However, they're not gonna to be too exact, and if you want to have a little bit of mystery, feel free to actually just look at this map take a screenshot, and then uh, fast forward to the next section that we're gonna be talking about, which is the gratitude crystals off of the island. On this rightmost side of Skyloft, there's only one that we can get, which is gonna be on a tree that's right about here. If we head to the top of all of the residential area, you're gonna see a very large pumpkin patch, and by the pumpkin patch is a tree, and behind the tree, boom, gratitude crystal. 
That's going to be our first. Unless they changed it, there are 80 in the entire game. We're going to head to the end of the pumpkin patch and we're going to jump off of the edge. Now we're going to make our way to those. Oh, thanks, Mr. Bat. We're going to make our way to those four stepping stones on the other side and we're going to actually head inside of the waterfall, you know, where we went to go get our burb the first time. Inside of the waterfall cave, we're just going to make our way to the very end once again. I know, giant inconvenience. I'm sorry, not my fault. As soon as you exit from the waterfall area, you're going to find another gratitude crystal right outside. And we're going to head down the same pathway that we went to actually go find our burb and right where he was being locked up, you're going to find one more gratitude crystal. Make our way outside of the waterfall cave, back to Skyloft. Be careful of the little cat rat thing. Make sure to pet it with your sword. Great. You're gonna see some wooden planks over here. You're gonna run up them. And then as you're coming up on the left-hand side, you are gonna see a gratitude crystal right in the corner. Now we're gonna follow this pathway all the way around and it's gonna bring us to the front of the bazaar where there is a residential house and we're going to be entering this residential house. If you look to the right soon as you enter, boom, crystal. Heading outside of the house, if you look to the left, is going to be the large light tower. You're going to climb up it, but not to the second floor. Instead, only the first floor. Make your way to the other side and gratitude crystal. We have four more that we have to get. And as we make our way back toward the night academy, you're going to see an area that you could just drop down, drop down, use your sailcloth to break your fall, and boom, gratitude crystal. Now I would like you to climb all the way back up, head up the stairs, heading back towards the Knights Academy and halfway up at nighttime, maybe also during the day, there's always going to be a beetle on the wall and there's a chance that in one of these pots is going to be a mantis. So be sure to go get those boys. Underneath that underpass and then back to the sparring hall, which is where you got your practice sword originally at the beginning of the game. Inside of the sparring hall, as soon as you start up, grab your beetle, face upward and launch him into the rafters. On the far side of the rafters is going to be a gratitude crystal. And when it comes back to you, there's no animation. How can we have to have an animation for every other single gratitude crystal? I don't know why. We only have two left and both are located inside of the Knights Hall. We're going to make our way up these boxes because the bottom door is locked at nighttime. As soon as you get inside of the Knights Academy, look to the left and you're going to find a gratitude crystal inside of the plants. And the very last one is going to be located in Link's room, which is on the first floor to the left as soon as you go down the stairs. And boom, right on my desk, gratitude crystal. Fantastic. Now that we have a total of 10, we have all the ones that we could get at Skyloft at nighttime for now, and we're going to sleep until daytime. I chose the wrong option. Great. When you awake in the morning, we want to head out and we actually want to go find that little girl's mother that we just helped out. The next morning, you want to run out into Skyloft and that's where the bridge is. Instead, we're going to head down these stairs and into this house right here, which is kind of right in front of where the waterfall is. And inside of here, we're going to find the little girl and her mom. Speak to the mother. She's going to be super happy that you found her lost daughter. And she's going to give you five gratitude crystals. That brings you to a total of 15. And then if you speak to the little girl, uh, she says, Uncle Bats told me he wants to see all the gratitude crackles he can. But how's he going to do that? Adorable. Adorable. As soon as you head outside, you're going to notice that inside of the plaza is going to be a guy there and he looks super fret right now. Let's go over there and talk to him. This guy over here, he has a quest marker above his head. Huh, wonder where she's gone. Huh, wonder what you're talking about. His little sister went out for a flight and she hasn't come back and he wants us to find out what's going on. Simple, first thing you do is jump off of the ledge. It's always a great, great time saying that. Once you're out in the air, if you open up your map and you look over here, you're going to be seeing an island that's called Fun Fun Island. We can't really do anything at Fun Fun Island yet, but if you look to the right, this is one of these little turbo islands. This is also a turbo island that should be right in front of you. And this little green island right here is one that we are going to need to make our way to. So if you head inside of this little turbo, and if we look over here, we're going to see a sky, a, a, a a uh, loft wing. <laughs> Favorite thing to do. Speak to the girl here, and she's gonna say, Whoa, my bird it is not good. I need medicine for my bird. Go talk to my brother. And you say, Okay. So return back to Skyloft and go talk to her brother. Landing from the sky right into the plaza, you're gonna see him over here. And he's gonna say, Whoa, you found my sister. Give her some mushrooms. Mushroom spores. That's for the bird. Uh, and then you actually get to keep the bottle, which is super neat. 
Again, we're gonna run back off of the pillar and we're gonna go run back over to the island. You're gonna give her the mushroom spores. She's gonna be super happy for that. She's going to spray mushroom spores onto her bird's wings. The bird is going to immediately feel better. There's some crazy mushrooms, dog. She's gonna be so, so thankful for your assistance that she's gonna give you five gratitude crystals. Great. Now, before we head back to Skyloft, there is one more place that I want to visit. Only if you went to Beetle and got that additional wallet already, are you able to really get that chest over at the pumpkin? Because it's going to be for a total of 300 rupees. This is going to be from the goddess chest that was at the very end of the last temple. And if you do have the additional wallet that you bought from Beetle, then you could hold a total of 600. If you didn't, then you can only hold 300 and you're going to lose rupees on the deal. Here, we're going to fly right above it and try to land on the ceiling. It's okay if you take some damage, because I don't care, because it's not me playing your game. And you're going to open up this chest. Boom, gold ruby, worth 300. Very nice. Now we're going to head back to Skyloft once again. And we're going to go speak to the guy back in the plaza. Hey, Paro, aren't you so happy that I helped out your sister? Yes, you are. That's how thankful you are. You're five gratitude crystals happy. Nice. Now that we have a total of 25 gratitude crystals, we're actually going to go visit Uncle Bats again. Fun fact, you don't need to be in nighttime to visit him anymore. So you just go visit him in the middle of the day because, you know, he's a monster, but not at heart. When speaking of Uncle Bats, you can actually stack up your rewards. He's going to be giving you the medium wallet that allows you to store 500 rupees. And this will actually stack with the wallet that you bought from Beetle, which is pretty nice. And the reward for, what was this, for 10? Yeah, the rule, right? 10? Yes. The reward for hitting 10 gratitude crystals is a piece of heart. Very nice. Our next order of business is to make our way inside of the bazaar, and you're gonna notice that our item selling guy is selling some new items. First thing we're going to be picking up is the iron shield. We're gonna get this because it doesn't burn, because we're going to a place with a lot of fire. And if you look over here to the side, you're going to see a seed satchel. This is going to be something that makes it so you can actually hold a few more seeds. It costs 100 rupees. Uh, why did I not get it? Is my, is my inventory full? I think my inventory might be full. If your inventory is full, then we need to go talk to the item check girl, which is over here. As I previously mentioned before, uh, she has sort of a, a side quest that's reliant on you talking to her a lot and then also saying that you two are in love. <laughs> and I believe the things that change the value of this quest happening is the amount of nights that you sleep and then the amount of times that you talk to her. And in theory, you can spam it, but you really don't need to because it's it's all pretty like well wrapped together and it, it's a it's a nice balance. So don't even worry about it. We are going to be addressing it much later in the game. The seed satchel is going to hold an extra 10 Deku seeds for you. But if you want to, we can actually upgrade it right now. As long as you had enough ornamental skills and amber relics. And for some reason, I don't. And our last order of business that I would recommend right now is we are actually going to be making our way back inside of Beetle's floating shop. Which now you can just shoot the beetle to get to Beetle. <laughs> if you've been following along, chances are you have about 200 rupees now. And as long as you have a hundred of them, you can actually come over here and get this additional wallet. And now, boom, we're going to have the medium wallet that we got from Uncle Bats plus 600. That means that we can now hold a total of 1100 rupees, which is going to be super helpful for this next area we're going into because you are going to get all of the rupees in the game possible. And with absolutely nothing left that we can do in Skyloft right meow, we're going to be making our way into the new pillar inside of the clouds that's going to make our way to the Elden Volcano, which is going to be the north area above Skyloft. As soon as you arrive, make sure you interact with the Burb statue. And if you look to your left, if you hop down, there's going to be a goddess cube. We're going to activate that right away. I just want to go and cross this little rock and up these two stairs because there's going to be a new insect that we can now get our hands on, which is going to be on this left wall. And it did not spawn for me this time. Really? Thanks, guys. Oh, but there's an amber thing and I needed that. The bug that can spawn on the wall are ladybugs. They are all over the Elden area. Let's head back to the main pathway and we're going to head over the two rocks that you're going to find right here. 
A little bit down the road, one, you're going to see a goddess cube in the background, and I always, always forget that one. But you're going to run into these two gods over here, named Lead and Kobol, who are also not a fans of the Book Goblins. And they talking about digging. That's, that's pretty much their favorite thing. They just love digging up stuff. As you're coming over here, you're going to see a little bit of vines on the side. If you just hop down here, you're going to find a red rupee. Back on the main path, watch out for all the fire chews everywhere. And welcome to inside of a giant lava area. You're gonna head to the left, but you have to time it right because the floor is hot lava, quite literally, and it can go up and down. And if you touch it when it's up, then it burns your butt. This is a room that basically gives you a tutorial on how to throw and roll bombs. As opposed to most Zelda games in the past that you can only throw them, you can also roll them like a bowling ball. And if you do it, you get this blue rupee over here. Grab the bombs, throw them at the rest of the things. If you're playing in hero mode, there is a small stool over here that you can sit on, which is very convenient. Anyways, one of the rock walls gave you a cutscene. You want to head that way. And that's going to bring you to another bird statue. This one being the Volcano East. Continuing along, you want to hug the left side of this pathway. Ignore that guy. Instead, there's going to be a goddess cube over here. And ah uh, golly, I always forget this one. But I'm really happy this time I didn't. Heading back around the perimeter, you're gonna find Mirko. And he's gonna say how the, he doesn't like those red creeps either. And he saw a funny dressed character in black going inside of that area. Maybe we should follow him. Well, we, we kind of can't do that yet. Instead, we have to take the long way around. And hey, look, it's a brand new enemy that I don't think is in any other uh, Zelda game. I believe this is called a Pyrup. Oh, oh, sorry, microphone. Get it? Because it's like a pyromaniac pup. And he's going to be shooting fire from this area. Good thing we already had a tutorial on how to go bowling with bomb flowers. You're also going to learn that in addition to the direction that you're facing, there is a little curve that you can get of it, give it right at the end of the uh, the pathway, which is pretty neat. Watch out, you have a Bokoblin captain over here. And now we're going to enter an area with two fire pups or fire ups in the side of giant skulls. You have to pick up the bomb flowers and throw them inside of the giant skulls and that will uh, defeat them. I feel like bomb flowers last so long in this game. Before progressing, we actually want to head up as if we were to go straight. That's the area that we just came from with those two bomb flowers. Before we address that area, we want to keep going this way and you're going to keep climbing up a little bit and we're going to run into a new bug. These are Elden Rollers. They're actually kind of dung beetles. I just realized, because now they're in high resolution textures, that they are rolling with their hind feet. Oh no! They committed livent. Okay, that's fine. Continue up the passageway. You're going to be coming across another Pyrup that you honestly don't even need to interact with. You can just run past him and you're going to be getting a piece of heart right on this cliff. Awesome. While you're here, if you want to, you can pull out your beetle, face it upward. You're going to find a nice blue rupee right here. And once you're inside, if you go to the right, you can find a red rupee. Nice little bonus 25 for doing nothing. That's pretty neat. Anyways, now you're going to notice that we're pretty far back and you kind of have to backtrack, which should take about, I don't know, four seconds. Up next, feel free to cross the bridge and go speak to that guy who talks about all this lava is totally not flowing anywhere. Or you just grab this bomb and you throw it to get this lava flowing everywhere. Isn't that so awesome? That's why you have me. Next, make sure you run across this. Do not walk. The right side of this area you can climb up on. And we're going to continue down. You're going to be taking the closer air column. It's kind of important here. You need to do a like a sky jump. So make sure you have a little bit of distance and you're holding down the B button. And then you run to the left. And then you start working on your motion controls. Because you want to land right here as soon as you spawn in. And that's going to lead you to a chest. This is going to be your first piece of Elden Ore in the entire game. I believe we need two to upgrade our shield. But anyways, if you look straight ahead, you're going to see another goddess cube. You kind of want to line yourself up. And once again, get ready for tilt controls. Run forward with B. And you want to land right there. Activate the goddess cube. And that's going to fly up into the sky. There's a very good chance that you missed one or both of these. If you did, you can return here. If you just hop up here, climb up, you're gonna see a big old wind column, hop inside of it, and you're gonna be thrown back on top of this area, which is pretty much the passageway that you came in. Hopping down once again into the airstream. 
Let's once again continue our way down. There is a bird statue here that you can choose to save your game at. It is not a fast travel point. And you're going to see a mine shaft. We're going to head inside of here. We're going to be greeted by a... Hang on. I want to look up the name of their species. Magmas. They are magmas. They're mole people. They're called magmas. That is their race. Got it. We're going to run past him and there is a giant horde of enemies. Honestly, if you just keep staying down here and defeating these enemies, they're just going to... Ow. Keep spawning in more and more and more. Instead, this guy up there, you need to make sure you defeat him as early as possible. It may be your option to just ignore everyone on the ground. Excuse me, I'm doing a thing here. Ignore everyone on the ground and defeat him first. After he's defeated, he's not able to call for any more reinforcements. Make your way through all of the Bokoblins with your sword to their faces. And Knackle is going to be so impressed with you. Don't worry about that chest, we're going to get it momentarily. You're going to head back into the way that you came, and we're going to go speak to Knackle. <laughs> Knackle the Magma. Knackle is going to be presenting you a pretty neat item. These are, these are the mitts, right? Yeah, the digging mitts. With these digging mitts, we're now going to be able to access all of these dirt patches, paths, dirt spots. Let's go with spots. You're now split to a crossroads. I'm going to recommend you take the left one. There may be an amber thing. Very nice. We're going to dig into the hole. That's going to bring us up and follow this linear path to the top. There's going to be some enemies that you do not need to defeat. There is a chair inside of here and there are three tunnels. You want to take the middle tunnel. This is going to bring you to the treasure chest that was in the room with all the book hoblins that you had to fight before. And your reward for that backtracking? Some more Elden Ore. Neat. And now we're going to be taking the right mine shaft. This is a large room filled with a whole bunch of structures. And there's some pyrups inside of here that are blocking your path. You're also going to find a few digging spots. Feel free to dig at these digging spots. From here, you're actually going to be finding two bomb flowers. What you want to do is you want to throw them right at the entranceways of those mouths. And right from the bomb flowers, turn left and there's going to be a subtly bombable wall. This is going to be a mechanic that you have to learn about later, but you can learn about now for some treasure. That treasure being a silver ruby worth 100 rupees. Very nice. Backtrack to the bomb flowers. We want to head straight and then to the right, you're going to find another pyre up. And then you're going to continue to the right of him, straight back, and you're going to be finding another area with bomb flowers. Turn opposite and be sure to take out this one. And now you can exit this room. The digging spot will lead to a wind tunnel and bringing you up and outside of this underground area. From here, our first order of business, Zank is going to interrupt us and say that he saw the guy who was dressed in all black and he crossed this bridge over here. But instead, we're going to make our way to the right, grab this bomb, place it down, and that's going to create a fast travel point from one side of the mine to the other side of the mine. Now, once you approach the bridge, it's just going to magically open up for you. Hey! Whoa, the goddess's chosen hero. Wow, it's Impa. I mean, a strange character that we do not know the identity of yet. If you've played any Zelda game or Super Smash Brothers, you know who that is. Anyways, here is going to be a bird statue. Uh, I recommend dropping a save down here because this next area can get a little dicey. You're going to see some rocks to the right that you cannot access yet with a bomb. So we're going to head over to the left. Hopping over the lava, you're going to see a very large slanty sandy area. So what you need to do is you need to run up this. I'm going to recommend running up the left side and then we're going to take out this Bokoblin. And with good timing, you can head up here. And then if you hit them down, you just see them roll. Which is a little rough because sometimes they'll drop an item that you want, whether it's a heart or a item drop. And now this guy up here, you can actually just take out your beetle. You're going to make him very nervous and he's going to throw that rock down. Now you don't need to worry because he's not going to throw more rocks at you. But before we progress up, you're going to head over here to this one bomb and we're going to throw it down. This is going to be a fast travel or, or sort of a backtrack point between literally where you entered all of the volcano and, and there was supposed to be there was supposed to be ladybugs, but there weren't. And now this area. So it saves you a huge amount of time much later in the game for one specific thing you have to do. With no further ado, let's head on up. And this Bokoblin is going to try to throw a rock at us. From here, there's going to be a camp of Bokoblins. Take them out. You're going to hear a guy on a horn. 
And I recommend for this, you pick up this bomb, you toss it over here, and then he's gonna go kablooey. And now, inside of here, is going to be the number one best way to get rupees in the entire game. This rock wall, you bomb it, we're at the lower camp, and then you're going to enter. This is a game that involves digging, and it's basically Minesweeper, if you're familiar with that PC game that was included with every PC for, I don't know, ever. I'm gonna be going over a full strategy on how to farm these rupees in a video that I'm probably gonna release one hour from now, uh, just cause it's going to bog you down quite a bit. It's gonna be in the playlist and it's gonna be listed down below, so uh, this is gonna be the number one way to get rupees in the game, and I'm gonna go into extra detail and show you a huge trick about it. But for now, we're gonna continue our ascent of the volcano. Oh, nice. Finally found some ladybugs. Sweet. Yoink. Watch out, stick to the right side because there's a giant fire chew. There's gonna be another Bokoblin ascent. For this one, you can go up the middle, just stick to the right side because this middle Bokoblin is gonna kind of throw leftish. And uh, yeah, no hesitation. Maximum effort. Just run on up. That rock is gonna come down. Take care of this Bokoblin who's not paying attention. Take care of this other Bokoblin who's not paying attention. See if they dropped any goodies down there. They did not. You can now feel free to take out your beetle and fly your beetle up and have them drop rocks on themselves or just run away. Or you could just run up here and uh, just take care of them with, you know, good old fashioned thwacky and wacky. Oh wow. That Bokoblin threw a rock and it hit the other Bokoblin which caused him to fall to his death. Poor guy. If you focus up at the top, there's gonna be three Bokoblins up there. I say run up the right side. When they have the giant rock in their hand, they actually can't really defend or anything. So great opportunity to, you know, murder them. Ooh, got an item drop. That's what we were looking for this whole time. This is actually one of the best places to come and farm these uh, ornamental skulls as well. Hey look, there's two more of these magmas over here. This is actually great text. I'm gonna read this. Hmm, I'm sure they buried around here, but I can't find it. So, what they buried again? A key. K-E-Y. Key. They busted up the key to the door and hit pieces all over the place. I'm telling you, one of the five pieces is buried right around here. Why are we so worried about a key when we could just dig our way in? What? Um, just saying. You ain't as dumb as you look. Fee is just going to reaffirm the exact same things that you just read and give you a dowsing ability to find pieces of the key. There's a bird statue here. I recommend saving your game. There's going to be five pieces of the key. Some are very easy to find. Some are very difficult to find, like this one right here. Bum, ba, na, na, na. We got a piece of the key. Nice. From here, if you look to the side, you're going to see a small puddle and a digging spot that has a wind tunnel. Let's go grab one of these bombs and you're gonna throw a bomb on top of the wind tunnel, and that's gonna blow up the rocks up here. And that's gonna be a goddess cube. Sweet, dude. From here, where all these bomb flowers are, you're gonna grab one right at the very edge, and we're gonna throw it right over here, and basically, we just need this giant tower to fall down. And right underneath where it existed is another digging spot. Dig in the digging spot, and you're gonna get your second piece of the key. Hey look, it's a weird looking propeller. Funny enough, it looked just like the thing on the back of a windmill. Huh, neat. Anyways, let's run back up the sand. Huh, look at that weird shiny globe up there. There's only one, that's weird. From here is sort of a really temperamental one. Ooh, it's another Elden Roller. Uh, 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 yoink. Okay, over here, Overlooking the large cliff that you scaled before, there's two bomb flowers and there's one large rock. You wanna grab the further one and there's like a very perfect distance that you can throw it. Did I get it first try? Wow, I did, okay. And that's gonna be our third piece of the key inside of this digging spot. From here, we're gonna backtrack to the top of the slippery sands. If we head over to the side, you're gonna find a small Bokoblin camp. There's going to be a total of three here, I believe. In addition to the three, there's going to be a captain on top. He's going to blow his horn. And there's going to be a bomb inside of one of these huts. And he's going to fall to his, uh, uh to, to, to stop blowing the horn. Cool. 
And past this hut, if we go down here, is going to be one of the most important goddess cubes in the entire game. I'll explain why later. From here, head back up side of the hill and you're going to make your way over this newly formed, uh, let's call it a bridge. And in here is a small little adorable little overgrown area. You're going to make your way over here, just climb up, continue scaling, it's pretty linear, there's not really too much to explain, until it comes to this leap of faith here at the end, just hop on over, and now you need to make your way, oh, oh wow. Okay, the free roaming camera makes this so much easier that you could see where that stamina fruit is going to be before you get there. Now we're going to head on up and we're going to make our way to the left a little bit. And there's going to be a switch. That way we never have to do that again. This further digging spot will always have rollers in there for us. Uh, I've seen as much as three, I've seen as little as one. But to that of my knowledge, there's always some guaranteed in there. There's only one exit from here and you're going to see a whole bunch of fire. Now, you need to run through here, and you are going to be on fire. Quick, make a right, make a right, make a right, hop down. And once you start sliding, you're then going to be no longer on fire. So, you're going to see two paths over here, right? We're going to make our way to the right path. Up this wind tunnel. If you dig right here, there's going to be a fairy. You most likely still have an empty bottle from the mushroom spores that you helped with earlier. So scoop up that fairy. And if you look down, you're gonna see a way with 10 rupees and a way with five rupees. You wanna go this way of the two blue rupees on the right. Good job, Austin. Try to get the 10 rupees. Stay to the left on this small landing and you're gonna see two small wind tunnels. Now you wanna kinda time yourself that way make sure you land on the second wind tunnel from the first wind tunnel. Hold forward and dig right here for your fourth piece of the key. Unfortunately, we do need to make our way back up to the top because there is a goddess cube that we need to get from up here. In hindsight, we probably could have gone that way before, but I did want to get that fairy. Making our way down the slide all the way, you're gonna to come to a split in the road. Now, we're gonna make our way to the right. We're gonna grab this bomb, walk back outside, toss the bomb over, I did not make it. What if we get like really, really close to the corner, to the edge, and then we put it down? Will that work? Oh, that will work. Neat. And this is going to be one of those times that you really, really underestimate how long these bomb flowers last. You're going to pick it up. You're going to toss it over there. You're going to run over there. You're going to pick it back up. Then you're going to toss it over again, and you're going to keep your distance. And inside of there is going to be the fifth digging spot containing the fifth key. From here, don't worry, there is a way to fast travel back to the top of the entire volcano. Back of the split with the three skulls. They might have some rupees for you. If you continue on, you're going to see a wind tunnel up, but before you activate that, I recommend grabbing a bomb and looking to the left, and that's going to be a fast travel point to the volcano ascent. Also, there might be some ladybugs on the wall. Adorable ladybugs. Hop inside of this big old wind tunnel, heading back up to the top of the volcano, and boom, right next to that switch that we set up before. Isn't that awesome? Now just backtrack back until the area that you need to use that key. And now that we have the key, we are all sent to enter the temple, but as soon as we click on that, then it's actually gonna enter the temple, and we do that at the beginning of the next video, and I don't wanna do that right now. And before we actually enter there, we have to do all the rupee farming, which I'm gonna be covering in a video that's gonna come out very shortly. I'm probably gonna drop it in like, an hour. So in theory, as soon as you're done watching this at premiere, you're going to be able to watch the next video at premiere. And then you're going to be able to go right into the walkthrough inside of the dungeon with me. Great. Well, guys, thank you for checking out this part of the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD 100% walkthrough. My name is Austin John. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. On screen is going to be the next episode, if it's released, as well as a playlist to help you keep track of what's going on. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.